looking at at uh, Rav Hirsch, and um, there he is. Let's go move you to where I could see you while looking at the text. So we were looking at Rav Hirsch, and Rav Hirsch was dealing with threes in a very different way. And what we've seen so far was, well, he started with the discussion of Tchelet, Tcheles, and um, how the uh, Tcheles was all over the base of Migdash. I'm going to do it over because it's reading English, so it should be quick. The Tcheles cover, which tradition describes as blue-violet, is mentioned uh, in Hashem's law only in a connection with the sanctuary. Um, I should point out that the, the modern theory as to what Tcheles is is actually chemically identical to indigo. So if you want to know what color my tzitzes are, it's, um, it's a light indigo. Blue-violet, I guess, is a pretty accurate description. The, the Kohen Gadol wore a mi'il khalil tcheles, a mantle of, of tcheles cover, color. When the Arna Kodesh traveled before the Bnei Yisrael in their wanderings through the wilderness, it was covered with a beged khalil tcheles milmala. It had an outer covering that was also entirely of tcheles. The other accessories of the Mishkan, the Shulchan, the Menorah, the Mizbeach, well, Mizbeach Hazav, the Altar of Incest, Incense, whoa, that was a bad one, and all the utensils used in the Mishkan were covered directly with an inner cover of tcheles. So the, the Aron, the outer cover was tcheles, and underneath was the waterproofing, and the other kalim had waterproof covering on the outside, and the inner cover was tcheles. Thus, the coin gadol and the aron appeared draped in tcheles. Similarly, we note sealed tcheles, threads and loops of tcheles, wherever separate objects had to be connected or bound together for the purposes of the mishkan. The urios were joined into one piece by lulaos tcheles, loops of tcheles. The coin gadol's breastplate, the choshen, was joined to his ephod with sealed tcheles, threads of tcheles, to form one inseparable unit. Also, the tzitz, the front plate worn by the Kohen Gadol, was held by a sealed cheles. We may insert here, this is where we, you know, th th this was our connecting point. We may insert here conjecture regarding the significance of the Hebrew names for the colors. We find only three terms to encompass the colors of the spectrum. Adom for red, Yorok for yellow and green, and cheles for blue and violet. The only other form in which the word Adom uh, occurs in script in Tanakh is as the as, as Adam, man. Adama is undoubtedly derived from Adam, thus characterizing the earth as a soil for human domination, the earthly world wed to man as Ish, Isha is to Ish, but not in the reverse. So he's saying Adama, the Lashonikeva is to a dumb man as Isha is to Ish, the way um, the way Halacha allows for um, polygyny, polygyny, but not but, poly, but not polyandry. Right? Uh, There's yeah. About what was at the beginning of the page? What 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 is this? Only about things having to do with the sanctuary. So what about the tailored on garments? Where does he say only? It's mentioned in the Tchela color, which tradition describes as blue violet, is mentioned in God's law only in connection with the sanctuary. You're right. You're right. So so that is... And is Tchela only obligatory when... Uh, no, no, no. When he's, quote, he's quoting Tzitzis. Yeah. So he must mean, yeah. with the exception of this Pasuk, it's only yeah. mentioned in yeah. the Parashas of the Mishkan. Okay. Because his quote is is the... His quote is a Tzitz's yeah, quote. Right. Um, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. So, right. The thing is, though, the Pasuk says the reverse, right? The Pasuk says that Adam was called Adam because he was made from Adama. Right? Um, and on that Pasuk, he, he says what he says here in the next sentence, 
Rav Hirsch says, we recognize the word Adom again in Hadom, the root of Hadom with a Vav, which means footstool. And also Adon with a Nun, the root of Oden, the base of a column. Um, what he's doing there, and I think I mentioned this last week, he's not saying that there's a one letter root of Dalid. Um, what he does is the Rav Hirsch's theory about, about the Hebrew alphabet is that phonetically related letters are semantically related. So Adom and Hadom are, are both in one meta root because the Aleph and the He are both done in the back of the throat. Um, Similarly, Mem and Nun are both nasal, so Adon could become Adon. Um, but he's not saying that it's actually a one-letter root. It's kind of like a, a meta-root kind of concept. If you swap out letters that are related letters, you should get words that are related meaning. Um, like, for example, um, Eved, a servant, is, is somebody who is um, submerged, his will is submerged to that of his master, so he's lost Avad with an olive to his master. Um, that, that's the kind of um, wordplay that, uh, that Reverse's etymology does. Um, I don't know anybody who has a degree in etymology who thinks this actually works, but um, there is a dictionary that has every single root in all of Tanakh and um, and has made a network out of them, which is a pretty strong existence proof. Um, maybe the connections are just loose enough that you could do it anyway. All of this is kind of a tangent. Accordingly, we believe that Adam designates man as Hadom Ragle Shechina. If Adam is Hadom, a footstool, then man is the footstool of the foot of the divine presence, the bearer and agent for the divine and for Hashem's dominion on earth. Adom is nothing other than the object that meets the foot as it moves toward the ground, offering the foot a place of rest and thus sparing it the trouble of having to step squarely on the floor, on the ground. Thus, the position of the human being in between earth and God could hardly be expressed in more significant terms than Adom or Hadam. Hadom. So red, we're talking about human being as being on the earth, on the bottom, right? Reaching up for God. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this picture of human being between earth and God, um, and, you know, and person as, as Hadom Raglov, as the, you know, as God's Ottoman, um, reminded me of what the, what the Maharal said about Kahuna, and that the job of a Kohen is to sanctify the, uh, the job of the Kohen is to sanctify the, the, the physical, right? That that was the, that was the attribute of Kahuna that, a, that a, the um, Kesher Kahuna represented. So here you have red is, is not just a human being, it's a human being um, supporting bringing God into this world. The only other form of Yod Resh Kuf we have is Yarok, which is to cast away from oneself. I guess he, I guess either Yarokos is only once you get to Mishnah Hebrew, or maybe he considers Yarokos to be so obviously greenery and not really a separate word than, you know, than Yarok the color. Pchela being derived from Kala would literally mean the end. Meaning, within the spectrum, which is known by, by the rainbow, through the refraction of light, which is present whenever a prism brings, breaks up a ray of light, the Hebrew language combines the colors into three groups in the following order, red, yellow, green, and blue, violet. Red is the least refracted ray. Now, I know he's saying this in physics terms, but it's also true visually. It is the closest to the unbroken ray of light that is directly absorbed by matter. Ray is the light on the bottom of the rainbow. It's the one closest to Earth. 
So while Rev Hirsch is phrasing this as a physics term, this is the way somebody, you know, at first glance looking at a rainbow would see red. Red is the light in its first fusion with the terrestrial element, a dome and hadome. Is this not again man? The image of God is reflected in physical earthly matter, but Atmelokim. The next part of the spectrum is, is yellow green, Yorok, which again he has very little to say with, say about. And then blue violet is at the end of the spectrum, Tchelas. The spectrum visible to our eye ends with the blue, violet ray, Tchelas, but additional magnitudes of light radiate unseen beyond the visible spectrum. Likewise, the blue expanse of the sky forms the end only of the earth that is visible to us. And so Tchelas is simply the bridge that leads thinking man from the visible physical sphere of the terrestrial world into the unseen sphere of heaven beyond. Uh, while I sip, any, any questions, any observations, any realization of why I brought this up? I can tell you that I have been wondering. <clears throat> okay. Where does, where does he pl place red? Sorry, I meant uh, to pronounce as to me the ground. Right, which is not only the ground, but also the human being as a physical implementation of the divine image. He's placing red where the grub placed the nefesh. Oh. Is the seed of taiva. It's the physical end of man. Okay. Okay. And he's placing tchelas as the sky, sky heavenly end of man. Right, and that Gemara did already pretty clearly. Oh, you mean Adom, Edom, Asav? Well, he doesn't go that here, here, going? but well, he isn't. I, I, I'm highlighting the fact that he that he notes that there's only three colors in the rainbow, um, in in the language of the Chumash, before you know more colors get individual names. And these three colors are the one that is earthy, the one that is that is sky and heavenly, right? The the floor of the 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 in Mishpatim when they see the image of of the man in the throne, right? The the floor is is Levnat Hasapir. It's um it's brickwork made of out of sapphire or lapis lazuli, whatever sapir means. Um, but it's some kind of blue stone uh, floor work. So you see that the, the three colors he's giving, one is related to earthiness, one is related to heavenliness, and one is in between. Rav Hirsch doesn't say this, but I would note that the one in between is the one we naturally associate with growth. Because that's all plants do. So I see Rav Hirsch's symbol system as being a way of talking about symbols, talking about the same ideas that that we've seen already, but as symbols of mitzvos that you, symbols found in mitzvos that we're already doing. I, and I that's hear, why I brought it up. I hear what you are saying. I hear it makes sense. Ah, no pushback. For once. You know, I, I enjoy the pushback, I got to tell you. <laughs> I, I can keep you on your toes by not pushing back sometimes. Okay, whatever. Or somebody else could take off the gauntlet. Well, no pushback because I was thinking the same thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the basic color of the Mishkan was, was Tchelas. For the law of Hashem originated from the, neither from the light that is contained in the earthly manner, matter, nor from the divine spark that is innate in man, who was handed to us from beyond the limits of physical, visible manner, matter, min hashamay mishmiyacha es kolo, from heaven you heard his voice, was handed to us by Hashem himself. If we obey it, the heavens will incline toward us. The color reflecting the splendor of heaven will then enrich man and all things human, and the glory of Hashem will dwell in our midst. 
Cheles is the basic color of the Mishkan and the Kohen Gadol's clothing, vestments, the color Cheles representing heaven and the things of heaven that were revealed to Yisrael. I want, to, I want you to note this because it's going to come up when in a page or two when we get to six, seven, and eight. He is, he distinct, Rav Hirsch distinguished between the Kedusha, the, the, the Kedusha of the Mishkan, which is from beyond human reach, right? Minah Shamayim, and the, and the divine spark, which is a native man. There's two kinds of, of beyond physical going on here. And he's going to elaborate that in the next symbol system that we're going to do after this. Um, basically, why are there eight strings is the next, is the next section. Cheles is a basic, oh yeah, we did this. Um, and the, the high priest uh, vestments, the color of Cheles representing heaven and all things of heaven that were revealed to Israel. Cheles domel yam, v'yam domel rekia, for rekia lichise kavod. Wow, that's called hypercorrection. Tcheles is similar to the sea. The sea is similar to the heaven, to the sky. The sky is, or whatever a key is. The the rakia is similar to the to the divine throne, as it says. Besachas, this is the Pasuk and Mishpatim that I quoted. Besachas raglav kamase levnasa sapir. The under the feet of the vision of the man in the throne um, is, I forgot who, but somebody I did, uh, I was Mavi Sedra with, maybe it was Safarno, said that the man in the throne is the Mer- Master Merkava. And the reason why they didn't see it as a Merkava, as a chariot, is Yechezkel saw Hashem preparing to travel because he was exiling Bnei Israel. And when Bnei Israel leave, is exiled, the Shekhinah is exiled. And that's why it was a chariot. But in times of peace, it's a throne. It's interesting. Um, but in any case, under the feet of the vision of the man in the throne, Kamasa Levnasa Sapir is something like sapphire brickwork. Latohar, pure like the like the center of, of heavens or sky. Um, that's a big difference, by the way, because there are Rishonim who, who say Tcheles is a light blue, a uh, day sky blue. There are those who say it's like a night, you know, almost a black. So Ketzem uh, Hashem it has to be left kind of vague. Therefore, no other color is as appropriate as Tcheles to signify Hashem's special relationship with B'nai Israel. A threaded Tcheles color on our clothing on our garments, conferred upon us all the insignia of our high priestly calling, proclaiming to all of us, Anche Kodesh Ti Yunli, and shall be holy men to me. Symbolically expressing our calling, Atem to you, Lima Melches Kohanim V'Goy Kadosh, shall be for me a kingdom of, of priests and a holy nation. If we now turn our attention to the Psil Tcheles on our tzitzis, my apologies to Tina, um, we will note that it was precisely this thread of Tcheles color that formed the krichos, the gadil, the thread wound around the other threads to make a cord. So Rav Hirsch is assuming that all the windings or nearly all the windings were Tcheles. Yeah, that's not so, that is not so being in, in um, the Tcheles group on Facebook, that's not accepted by everyone, correct? That is not what I personally do. Okay. Um, we could discuss why, but I think it's you want here. To, I'm not really driving to, to sit there. What? But you wanted to finish on time tonight. Oh, no, it's pretty simple. I wanted to have seven, eight, 11, and 13. But the windings are supposed to be in groups of three. Uh-huh. If you group the winding in three using knots, then the knot at the end of right, seven will be three, three, and one. Mm-hmm. Hat, right, the one would not be a group of three if I define my groups by knots. If I follow the gra and three white, three blue, I could do one white and then two white on the other side. 
and in some way they're still grouped in threes, and yet my windings are still basically the normal Ashkenazi windings. In case this isn't really Tchelas, I didn't veer that much from what everybody else does. Gotcha. That's my motive. It has nothing at all to do with this. He's also going to side with the Rambam, and uh, and that I actually also do, but we'll get there. The thread went round and round the, um, to make a cord. In other words, the vocation of the Jew, the Jewish awareness awakened by the Mishkan, or the Beis HaMikdash, that power is to prevail within us. We must act to unite all our, kinder, all our kindred forces within the bond of the sanctuary of Hashem's law. So the windings of the tzitzis are supposed to be using Torah and halacha to guide all of our talents and abilities. So when Kairach and his band of, of 250 men went and made a talus shakul etcheles, a talus of all etcheles, according to Rabbi Hirsch, they were essentially sort of totally missing the purpose of the, of the, the sort of binding the physicality and the spirituality together. Right. Although I don't know if he means physicality. He could mean, in fact, I don't, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. We'll see that when he gets to seven. But, okay. um, you know, let's just say the, the human, the humanness that's in this world and the, and the whatever it is that's beyond this world, it's Tchelas. Right. So I, I didn't make, make up the physicality because I was just thinking what the opposite is. But you're right. He did not say that I thought of that as right. a. Yeah. Right now, no, the fact that he has three channels is the whole reason why we're looking at this. Right. Because I thought that this way, through tzitzis, through other mitzvahs that involve eight, let's say, shmini atzeres, you know, mm-hmm. through his symbols, we could actually relate what we learn to mitzvah actions. <laughs> that was the point of, uh, of bringing up this, this text. Our calling as Jews, our Jewish awareness, cannot be separated from our calling as members of humanity. That's very reverse. It is certainly not alien to our human vocation. The Jew cannot dispense with the requirements of his calling as a person or expect his purpose without the latter. The fulfillment of our calling as Jews is linked to our calling as members of humanity and serves to perfect us in the fulfillment of the human vocation. That's why the seven white strings are not really the animal side of a person. It's the very human side of a person. In other words, the white strings are serving the role that he gave green or that I gave green a moment ago. Maybe because it's a clean slate, we think of white as like, you know, blank. Um, so therefore it's, you know, it's a human being who could, you know, write whatever they want on themselves. The Jew can accomplish his purpose as a Jew only within the... Con- oh, we, I said that. Uh, high, the highest degree of Jewish perfection is nothing else but the highest level of accomplishment in human destiny. Thus, too, the winding of the threads in Sitzis begins and ends with the ordinary thread, Lavan, used in the making of a person's garments, taking the Tchelas threads into the center. Tana Kishahu. Oh, and now here he assumes there's Tchilas threads. Tana Kishahu Maschil Belavan Akanaf Min Kanaf. Ushe Messiah, Messiah Belavan, Malin Mikodesh Flomaridin. The Gemara Menachos quotes a, a Mishnah when you start, although it's not really Mishnah, so I don't know why it says Tana. Kishahu Maschil Belavan. Kishahu Maschil Belavan. When you start with Lavan, it's because the Puzzle says, um, uh, tzitzis hakanaf. So therefore, the tzitzis of the corner. So we start with the tzitzis that be, that is like the corner. So we use the one that is min kanaf, the same type of thread as the corner. Um, and according to the Rama, by the way, if you get those green um, army tzitzis, you should have green strings, not white ones. Tosos disagrees, and we avoid the problem by wearing white tzitzis. This way, the white ones are the color of the garment, and the whole problem is avoided. Kishu misayim, and when you finish, misayim belovan, you finish with white, because malam mekodesh from loma, read, and you go up in holiness and not down. He, I'm not going to explain the last phrase, because that's where he's going. I mean, that's why, that's, he doesn't get it. 
Uh, just tiny. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is, 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 I don't know why you thought it was a Mishnah. It says Tana. That's a Bryce. Tanan would be a Mishnah. Thank you. Why? Because, I don't know, because I'm fading at the end of the day. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Rashi comments as follows. Min kanaf tchila. Right? The, the white thread, which is like the corner, comes first. Vacharkach psil tcheles. Afterwards, blue. Vikivan de akadma karelamin kanaf. Since it was first, it's called like the corner. Shmamina Khashovhu. Therefore, we see it's important. If you end it with Khelas, have a le morid sofa tzitzis mitkilaso. You'd be lowering the end of the tzitzis from the beginning. So then Muke Yosef, he remember he's having a problem with this. So I only know this because I ran ahead. So the Namuke Yosef explains the Rashi. Rashi is not trying to say that the that the um, that the lavan is better than the tchelis, and therefore malam mikodesh v'loma reading going up and holy is lowering would mean that you have you can't end with tchelis, you have to end with the white. Shatchelis domen lekisei akavod, because as we've been saying, tchelis is similar to the to the divine throne. Ela de Kivan Telasa Lalavan Trila, since he brought up the Lavan first, me Tom Kanaf min Kanaf, for the reason that Ha Kanaf means you should start with something like the corner, Ainmo Reedin Oso, it would be belittling the white string. Yasumi Menu Kasha Achronchu Kima Binyan. And therefore you should make it the last tight one, because that is what what solidifies the structure. So his explanation is not that you go up or the tzitzis goes up, but the string itself, because you start with it, you use it to close off the windings, to cap it off and, and finish the that whole, the winding section of tzitzis. Then Ramam says differently, it see and sounds exactly what the uh, what the price has said, right? The last winding is is white because you started with white, and you finish with it because Mama Kodesh below Marinin. Without explaining what that means, mm -hmm. since one ends with the same type of thread as one begins, the concept of Malin Kodesh Malin below Marinin in this context requires for their comment with Sirach Ion. He's left lost. He just has no idea why, you know, how Malam Kodesh Willow Meridian applies to um, applies to the white thread. Now, um, further further along the same theme, although it doesn't sound like it, the Shmona Chutin, the eight threads, the eight strings. We have already noted that tradition is not quite clear. Anybody, somebody else want to read? Yeah, sure. Okay. We have already noted that tradition is not quite clear with regard to the biblical commandment concerning the number of threads in the tzitzis. Likewise, there are varied views regarding the proportion of the number of tachelis threads to the others. However, if we accept the proposition followed by general practice and also established halachically by Rambam in place, uh, that the total number of threads is eight. And if we link this assumption with that of the relation of the tailless threads to the others, which was also stated by Rambam and is supported by the wording of the scriptural text and by Sifri, uh, we will see that this numerical ratio serves only to enhance the significance of our symbol. Right, so he's assuming that since this is eight threads, even though well, four doubled over threads, even mm -hmm. though base, that's Beis Shammai. Beis Hillel says there are only six. And um, so we hold like Beis Shammai on this one. And he's holding like the Rambam that one half of a thread, so one of the eight, a half of the four, which is one of the eight, is blue. So he's going to use the one to eight ratio. Mm -hmm. um, and that this... This page is why I, well, one of the reasons why I sided with only wearing one blue string out of the eight. The other reason being 
Um, I'm really not 100% convinced it's the right stuff. So again, I'm trying to minimize what I do to standard. <laughs> so anyway, so so he's focusing on the one to eight, uh, one to eight, what's it called? So, one go on. Well, according to Rambam, the fourth of the threads to be folded over double was tchelis colored in only half its length. So that the tzitzis consisted of seven threads that were white, apparently, or the color of the garment to which they were attached, and the eighth thread that was tchelis colored, uh, the eighth half thread. Um, thus, in each fringe, um, or tassel, I suppose, six threads were surrounded by a seventh thread of white and an eighth thread of tchelis. We believe that we have already established in our essay on Mila uh, the symbolic significance of the numbers seven and eight. The seven is the natural world and eight is supernatural. Um, I assume that's what he's talking about. Well, yeah, except, except right, except here he really focuses on seventh mm-hmm. out of the seven. So six, yeah. the seventh, and the eight. Again, notice there are three numbers, so you know we're going somewhere yes, right. relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was six afraid of seven because seven, eight, nine. Okay, um, okay, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so at any rate, the significance of seven and eight. There we noted how the scale of tones progressed to a harmonious conclusion with the number seven, actually really eight, but only to begin again with the number eight, but on a higher level. It doesn't sound like a conclusion on the seventh necessarily. It's, it's sort of leading okay. into the eighth, so, which, is the, which is also the first. Right, but his point is that the the scale of tones in Western and Levitic, yeah, 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 and and probably Levitic music, we don't really know, know. right? Uh Is a spiral staircase of seven steps, Uh so that eight is the next beginning, the beginning of the next cycle, right. Um, we also noted that certain phases and developments reach the goal of their progress with the number seven, only to enter into new higher phase with the number eight, whatever those may have been. No, no, we observed this. Yeah, yeah no, I went here because it, it summarizes. Okay, we fine. Observed, that's why we didn't start with Mila. Okay. We have observed this numerical series, particularly in God's work of creation in the history of mankind. The visible world created in six days was given the seventh day as a day of remembrance and as a covenant with the invisible uh, uh, Lord and Bore, Adon and Bore. Um, This seventh day marks the completion of creation. The eighth work of God, the creation of the people of Israel, laid the foundation for a world and mankind reborn and raised to a higher level. In other words, I I guess that it was done as, as part of history after the creation of the world and its time cycles and whatnot in the natural world um, in the seven days. Well, no, I think what he's saying is because eighth is the beginning of the next octave uh-huh. in, in this mashal, yeah. right? So like history runs 7,000 years and the 8,000 is the next yeah. cycle, uh-huh. right? Or Brismila is the eighth day. That's why it came up on Mila. Or Shmini Atzeres, which is the day specifically for the Jewish people. Or Shavuos, which is after seven weeks. Or Yovel, which is after seven Shmitos. Or Shmita, which is after seven years. Sorry, Shmita is the seventh year. Yeah. See, that's the basic difference. Shmita is the seventh year. Shabbos is the seventh day. Yovel and Brismila and Shmini Atzeres are after seven. Yeah. So what you see is the holiness that's in this world is on the seventh, right? Yeah. yeah. And and eight is the beginning of the next world. And I think he's defining the job of the Jewish people, not that the Jewish people are eight, but that our mission is to bring the eighth to reality. Right, he says, uh-huh. the eighth work of God, the creation. Of, oh, you're you're right. I'm, I'm I'm I was looking at lay the foundation for a world and mankind reborn, and here he's saying, no, it's our creation was the eighth. You're correct. Okay. 
I was thinking the Shemayim Chadashim and Eretz Chadash is the next yeah. octave. Yes, the cornerstone for the Shemayim Chadashim, New Heavens, and the right. Eretz, Chadasha, Eretz Chadasha, for which Israel and its vocation is to serve as its agent in bringing about a renewal of the world. Right, so of Hirsch and Parsha Shmini notes that there were seven Batei Migdash so far. How's that for a weird one? Um, okay. okay. Let me explain how, because I, there's I the, Mishkan, the Mishkan. The Mishkan is actually called by five different places. Right. Right, it's in the Midbar. It's in um, I, Gilgal. Nov, Gibbon. Nov, and, and um, Shiloh. Shiloh, right. So, so then the first base of I mean, the second base of I mean, Midrash was bring. So there are there are in Tanakh there are five there are five places that the Mishkan is identified with, and therefore he says that there's been seven Bati Midrash. The next one is the eighth. Yeah. And that he mentions that on Shmi, in Parsha Shmini, which is a little more midrashic than his usual speed. That the reason why it was built in eight days is because there's going to be eight Bate Minktosh. But that's that's what he does. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, linking that to the base of Minktosh, base of Minktosh, though, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, there were like three or four different buildings there. I mean, you had yeah, the original I know. one. The original one I know, I know. I, it, and it's, then, it's yeah, little... and then you have the sort of makeshift one that was built by Zerubbabel, and then you have the, 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 the Hashmanayim, and then you have Herod. Yes, but he doesn't. I, I, he doesn't. I don't know how he breaks no. them up because in the second base of Midrash, there, um, there's continual avoda. Yeah. Right, and that kind of unites them. Mm-hmm. But the Mishkan is also a continual avoda. Well, except or maybe not. Moved. Right, right, and if you count when it was moved, uh, then the and, midbar and, the, and be, the midbar was moved several times. Right, right, and the midbar wouldn't count as what as what. But, yeah. but this is his. Uh, you know, it more, um, I, I mentioned it to tell you how he sees eightness. Yeah. Right? As eight is the beginning of the second octave. Mm-hmm. Accordingly, oh, and in the, in, in Ksav Ashuri, I think it was right? Of, it says both the, as the end of the first octave and the, um, and the beginning of the next octave, the way that we sort of recycle that, you know, the, like when, mm-hmm. and then the Kabbalistic tree that uh, the, the the Malchus of this is the Kesser of the next level down or whatever. Yeah, except that's 10, but yeah. Yeah, I know, except that's 10, right. but you know, the things overlap. Right. I, um, he doesn't mention overlapping, does he? Doesn't seem to. No. According, because he considers B'nai Israel an eighth creation after the week. Right? So he's uh-huh. not really... Accordingly, yeah. we noted the number seven in both language. Law as a symbol of God, the invisible one who rules over the visible world and who has made a covenant with it as its uh, Lord and Master. The number eight symbolizes the people of Israel, the agent appointed by God to affect the rebirth of the world. Now, the sprout and blossom symbol uh, upon our garment um, not sure what words those ca- ca- are, but sprout is tzit. Okay. And gadil. Okay. I may have it backwards, but I think it's it's tzitz and gadil. Okay. And gadil would sound reasonable. It means it has to do with growth, after all. Yeah. It's just something like right, 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 right. I just yeah, don't know like if I got them order. swapped. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, right. Okay. Symbol no, upon our garment. Right. Shows us the numbers six, seven, and eight in its threads, um, thus placing before our eyes all the elements from which our character is formed and which, through us, will attain the flowering and development ordained for them by the will of God. As you said, there's six and sevens and eights. Um, so I, I, I get seven and I get eight. Oh, because six, because the, the, you begin and end with the... With, with the with the other color, right, okay. No, no, I think... No, no, I... I, I... I'm, I, I keep on saying no, but you could very well be right. But the way I, I saw it was, know. no, no, I'm, I'm correcting my, my yeah. habit of correcting people needlessly. That's all. Um, no, because you could be right. But the way I saw it was he spoke about the, the, the seventh and eighth threads binding the other six. Yeah. 
So that's where he got six. Uh huh. Right, the seventh thread being the last white one, and the eighth thread being the tailors. Yeah, I was wondering in that in that quote earlier from the Namuka Yosei, where it said uh, where it said Kasha, so you said it, it binds it tightly. I was wondering if that might have been a typo for Kesher, but you know, since it's a knot. Uh, but Yasemi Menu, well, that would make sense. But I, but I read it Kasha because he says Shahu Kima Binyan. Yeah, I'm not about to dig out a banana. So but see, yeah, see, hardened it. I mean. Yeah, I'm not sure the difference yeah. is is relevant to where I was going, but it will be uh, interesting to see them make okay, a safe either way. Um, right, the physical aspects of the human body. With physical aspects, okay, fine. Right. The physical aspects of the human body, like all the rest of the physical visible world of creation, are symbolized by the number six. The six days of, of creation, right? Okay, yeah. The Vav Kitsavos. Uh-huh. If that, if that phrase like head, anything. torso, two arms, two legs. Um, well, in, in the Vav Gitsavos is six of the spheros. Six of the spheros, yeah, but I, that, I don't know. That, that make up Zerampin. And, and, yeah, but Zerampin is often, but the spheros are taken, I thought, more as, you know, symbolic no. of thought and emotions and uh-huh. stuff. But yeah, know, but they the are Vav also taken as body parts. But, right, the, the Vav Gitsavos is also the three dimensions. Right, because if you don't use negatives, then top and bottom is two, front and back is two, left and right is two. So our our world is our space is six. The morale, which we didn't return to, the morale in Gvuras Hashem says seven is the middle, uh-huh. which is which you know is there but is unreachable, uh-huh. which compares interestingly to the next paragraph. Or a sentence, whatever you want to call it. The emanation of God unseen. The emanation of God unseen and originating from the invisible one is symbolized by the number seven. Okay. Uh, right, which I said is is an interesting yeah, yeah. comparison to the morale saying the seven is the middle, which you can't reach, yeah. but you know is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, is Das there or not? Um, uh, the vocation of Israel rooted in the historic selection of Israel is symbolized by the number eight. Um, right, so so again, let's yeah. go back to what we were seeing in the Maharal. In the Maharal, the middle <clears throat> had two roles, right? It was the it was the perfection of of the of Tov. It was the aspect of Tov that came from Torah study. And it was also the menorah, which was beyond, was, which was the Keser Shem Tov. It had like two roles. It was both, the middle was both an aspect of being human and the essence of being human. Right, that's how we had the menorah was both a symbol of, of wisdom and the seven wisdoms, and it's a something chimed. In, I don't know if it was us, and it was um, only my phone. It sounded like okay, and it's a right. So it's a similar wisdom. The seven wisdoms. Notice seven on the menorah, and um, and it's the and it's also though the Kesser Shem Tov, which is beyond the the, the Kesser Torah. Right. That was uh-huh. the that was yeah. the that, that ambiguity is going on here. The mm-hmm. emanation of God. Right. He said that eight the is the is job six. to go the beyond the seven. And, yeah, and Israel is eight. Right. But but Israel doesn't but, sound but, like our usual thing of seven and eight being physical and supernatural. Yeah. No, no. He's saying seven is the holiness is is the emanation of God in this world. Yes. And Israel is busy building the Eretz Chadashim and Chadashim in the next world. Yeah. So it's beyond this world. So seven yeah. is, the seventh is the holy aspect of this world. Okay. And the eighth is heaven, and therefore it's blue. Right. Yeah. And it goes beyond the spectrum. Right. So these right. are the elements from which we are woven. Yeah. These are the threads that God has placed into our hands. 
so that we may unite them into one harmonious whole to develop them in accordance with his will and thereby fulfill our calling, both as uh, people and as Jews, in the midst of our world and by means of all powers placed at our disposal. Means of all powers placed at our disposal is the six. Yeah. Or the seven. I don't know. Um, well, let's see the next yes, paragraph as, and then yes, we can as, stop as, to discuss. Okay. As human beings, and even more so as Jews, we are to subordinate with uh, free willed, godlike energy, our six to the seventh and the eighth. We must control our physical, sensual element by means of the human and Jewish element within us. We are to restrain the former by means of the latter and bind up the former with the latter into inextricable knots. Uh, but then I'm we, very good at tying myself into knots, so I'm, yeah, I got this licked. You know? I, I, I was very good at tying knots when I was a kid. I tied knots into everything. I just couldn't get them out. Uh, but then we must permit all our faculties held together by this bond to unfold freely in equal importance and in complete harmony. Also sounding, yeah, I mean, yes, it's the three, and it's also sounding like uh, Freud's three. Um, uh, that is the message of the six threads, which are surrounded and held together tightly by the seventh and eighth threads. Um, and which I guess is where, we, which I guess corresponds with that kasha up, uh, upstairs. Um, and kept firmly in place by tight knots, or maybe it isn't. Uh, maybe it is a kasha, from which they flew, flow forth freely uh, from, oh, alliteration, uh, from which they flow forth freely from our garments together with the seventh and eighth threads, each equal and parallel to the other as scissors threads. In view of the foregoing, there is no need for further explanation to show that the interpretation of the Rambam, according to which only the eighth thread was tcheles, uh, accords fully with the symbolic significance of both the number eight and the tcheles color. And then there's a piece of a picture of a scissors. Of a blue yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but right. So, yeah. right when I when I had my last set of tits done, I sent this picture to the guy who was tying the next set, that set. So you see, there's three white, and it switches to blue, then one white, then two white, three blue, three white. Yeah, that's how I get seven, eight, eleven, and thirteen, and still have groups of three. Right. If this is not Chalas, the only thing I lost aside from seventy something bucks is. Um, that I'm switching the, well, first of all, I'm, di I'm dying only the extra string, and I know it's only the extra string, mm. right? Even if it's, e right, I'm only dying the string that I got to wear in order to have eight. I'm not mm. dying one of the white strings, blue. So if it's not the trailers, I didn't lose Lava. That was the point of going with the Ram Mom and only having one of eight. And the yeah. fact that it accorded with Rev Hirsch just was was gravy on the what's called. Yeah. Do you have blue stripes on your talus? I don't remember. A long time. I have my talus has the color blue stripes that I would describe as a man would not realize. Let's put it this way: it's the color blue of the socks that I wear with the black socks. Okay, so it's navy blue. That it's not a no. It's even e no. It's even darker. It's it was okay. it's it's a I got it from a. Is this a the Belzer one. Yes, I wear a Belzer talus. Yeah. So that so that unless you know I'm wearing blue it, or or you're really like astute or a woman, you would not know that I that like I don't clash with the rest of the shul, but I personally know I'm wearing blue stripes. Okay. Like like how did both come uh, from? As you said, you you weren't sure you weren't completely convinced that it was necessarily the right thing, in which case you Want to have some of the blue in your talus so that you right. have the, so that you have, so it counts as love on. Right, that, that was exact. That was exactly the the motivation for having blue yeah. stripes and not black ones. Right. Either way, and th and that's obviously a wall somewhere in Israel with the stone uh, yeah. tiles and yeah. Okay, here mm -hmm. is I put all of the threes in one place. We're not going to go down them unless somebody really wants a full review. But notice he even has Rav Hirsch's green, blue, red, seven, eight, and six. And why is it this in this order? Because the top column was Torah, Avoda, and Gamilas Chasadim. So if Torah is the, is, is the way to get out of your body, 
right? To have divine thought so that you're not a physical creature, then it corresponds to everything he's been saying about green and seven. And whereas Avoda is going beyond what we have now, beyond this world, and the physical sources is, is the red and the six. But uh, but yeah, I made a huge table of all of the threes that we've that we've looked at so far. I just think it would be you know a little much to go through. Anybody? Uh, we're about to very very um, a, you know do a major topic change. So uh -huh. if you want to discuss anything about threes or or Rev Hirsch, now's the time to do it before I close the tab. Well, it, it, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if the, with the threes on the on the table, if the, you know, if there's some sort of commonality or something between the di different threes. I mean, or are they just different elements in the set of this is the seven set, this is the eight set, or this, or this is the one set, the two set, the three set. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by commonalities. What I what I saw as the three was that we're well, seeing. Torah, I'm not going to discuss all them. Yeah, how do they all necessarily? How do they fit to the, that model if that's the model we're going with? Well, well is there the, some other thing that would right? The, right. So the Maral, right? The Maral had said that what was Torah? Torah was the was the um, inherent tov mm -hmm. that a person has. Avoda was the tov in our relationship to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, and Gamilas Chasadim was our tov in relationship to others. Mm -hmm. But he also said, when we looked at the at the second Mishnah from him with, uh, at the Parak Dalit Mishnah Yud Gimel, mm -hmm. that the threes were um, Nefesh Ruach and Neshama, mm -hmm. right, and the yeah. physical, right. So I had seen this, and this was a point of contention with my favorite contender, um, I had seen the world of Torah and, and this relationship with, so, uh, sorry, the world of Gamilas Hasadim and the physical world are united in, um, in the sense that the physical world is where we encounter others. Oh. Right? The world yeah. between our ears is where we encounter ourselves and where Torah, you know, that, that world we could polish with Torah. The world, you know, our relationship with our Kodesh Baruch Hu, that's, that's up there in, in higher metaphysical realms. Right? But the uh, world of Kamil Chasadim, that, that is our relationship to others. That, uh, sorry, is was our, was is only possible because of the physical world. This is something I tried proposing back when we had that map of the Mishkan mm. on the first day, right? That there was something linking the Kior to the Shulchan because the Kior was the odd man out on the uncrowned vessels and it has to do with Tara and getting rid of the physicality and the Shulchan was the, was the odd man out on the crowned vessels but it's the Kesser Malucha, and it is the, um, and it has the, well, it has the bread, it has the, the right, the, the supporting, the supporting each other, it's 12 Shvatim, the, right, the, and, the, and the Mishnah associated with, uh, the Gemara associated it with Kesser Malucha. So I sort of saw the, what I see is that there are three, the, the, threeness is that we're being described as living in three worlds, the physical world, the spiritual world, and the world between our ears. We perfect them by our relationships in the physical world, which is with other people, our relationships with ourselves, or the way I wrote it here, our souls, with Torah, and our relationship with our Kaddish Baruch Hu, with Avoda. Yeah. And that was how, right, and Mm -hmm. Therefore, the physical world is the six, and it's the red, and it's the it's the providing bread for other people because bread is a physical item, is a physical need, and um, and that's why that's the keser malucha, which is the physical provider for the community, 
right? Avoda is the uh, is our relationship with our Kodesh Baruch Hu, Although, as we saw, the Maral forced me to backtrack a bit because the Maral said that Avod that the that the crown of Kahuna is not up in heaven; it's bringing heaven down to earth, and the and the crown of kingship was not was not down on earth, it's bringing heaven, sorry, Kahuna is bringing earth up to heaven and kingship is bringing heaven down to earth. It's not really in any one of the three worlds. It's it's different mm-hmm. ways of uniting them. Yeah. Um, but that's where I had been going on the first week. Yeah. yeah right? but, then, but then we still wind up in the, in the sort of conflict between the if you if the crowns are wh- where you're starting from uh that you actually have four crowns because of the Kesser shame toe right and except the, the four crowns no 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 because the 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 Maral said the fourth crown isn't really a crown right there are three crowns and then one crown goes yeah. above them yeah. so there isn't four crowns it makes a point to tell you the fourth mm-hmm. crown is different in kind than the other three yeah Right. And yet mm-hmm. the fourth crown is closely married to one of the other three more than um, more than the other two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what was I forget? Was there a, was there a fourth crown among the clay of Mikdash? Well, what happened? No, no, no. What he said was the menorah with the Lahalos near Tumid. Mm-hmm. And it's particularly the word lahalos. He was saying is the beyond the crown, which is the crown of Shemtov. Okay. Right. The Kesar yeah. Shemtov is not really a crown, but there is something that comes up from the menorah. Yeah. But he had also said that the menorah was the seven wisdoms. <sighs> mm-hmm. So he both identified it somehow or another with Torah, and yet also also said it's different than Kesar Torah. He also identified it with mitzvos, which is why it went before the Aron, which is the Kesar Torah. So it's it's Torah in the sense of everything, learning, yeah. doing, whatever, was where he saw as Kesar Shem Tov. Yeah. The Torah has all the definitions of everything. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I think this ambiguity was, an, was one that we hit in the very beginning when we couldn't understand whether... We were saying that Torah was a necessary precondition for the other two, mm-hmm. was a stand on a loan along with the other two. Or, I mean, like Maral, Maral, even in the first mission we looked at, was taking Torah both ways as both an aspect of being a person and the essence of being a person. Mm-hmm. I don't mean the essence of being yeah. a person is Torah. I mean, what Torah represents was the is yeah. the yeah yeah yeah, and I think therefore the fact that he identifies both Kesar Torah and Kesar sorry he identifies Kesar Torah with the Aron, but that both the Aron that both the the menorah is associated both with Torah in one place and with Kesar Shem Tov in the other. I think is a is a general ambiguity he's dealing with that the that the 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 intellect is both an aspect of being a person or the mind because it's intellect is kind of dry and mind includes emotion yeah. um but that that is both an aspect of being a person and the in- essence of being a person in different ways of looking at it mm-hmm. moshe looks either tired or totally unconvinced you're talking into a mute button I'm sorry, it's more tired than unconvinced. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and and we definitely identified the three as ruach, nefesh, and neshama. And what I what I really liked about it was, I'll explain to you a little a little vertel of mine on echad um, miyodeya, which I've never used at the seder because. By the time you get to Echad Miyodei, if you start giving to Rei Torah, there are people at my table who would shoot you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, I, I hear my pillow to... calling. Sha. Yeah. Okay. So Echad Miyodei, right, is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shabbat Shemayim right? Mm-hmm. 
Right. Notice though, Sheba Shemaim Va'aretz is already the other two, right? Is already the two two of the three. But okay. Mm-hmm. Two is the Luchos. One is Beinanam Lamakom and one is Beinanam Lachavero. We don't yet have Keser Torah, but we do have Keser Malchus and Keser Kahuna when we get to two. Then we get to three, and because of a human being is intention, between Keser Malucha and Keser Kahuna, out of that tension arises the third of, Yaakov. Right? We said that the three of us are, are the three crowns. Right. Are the three pillars, sorry. Mm-hmm. It was the pillar one that we had the of for. Are the yeah. three pillars. So um, the way I see it is HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a person a person is in tension between heaven and earth. From there emerges the third, which is the Shlosha Avos. The fourth, and this is where this little vertel ends because I didn't figure out five. The fourth is, um, in, at, least, at least if the author was a Mikubal, then um, the, fem, the masculine is the, right, this is all, Kabbalah is very, very much into discussing um, Arayos into discussing well, not so not Arayos, sowed Arayos, the secret of unions, and um, and therefore the male is the is the contributor. I mean, thing of reproduction, right? Mm-hmm. The female is the recipient, and therefore, when a human being is in a recipient position, we know that there's going on more than the three that we work in. So for Imahot, right? And that's why you have in Modim. We thank Hashem for four things. And four is one of those numbers that I that I count out when they come up in davening because I figure that that's a, a receiving number. Um, so that's sort of where I go with that. Why do I think Hashem made it that way? Um, well, I don't know why for why Hashem did anything. But he, here's, he, here's the way I view the world. Hashem created us to receive Tov, like the beginning of the Ramchal, or like, or like, um, or like Sefer Yikarim, or or uh, Emunos Videos. he created us because he can't be good without having somebody to be to be good too. But if we were only to be receivers, we wouldn't be receiving the gift of Tzelam Elokim, which is the greatest good he could have given us. So we also had to be givers, and therefore we exist in. Uh, Therefore, you have Keser Kahuna, where we stand in position as a recipient, and Keser Malucha, where we stand in position as a giver. And that, there's a basic tension there, because we're receiving the ability to give. And that, that, that paradox of receiving the, ability, the opportunity to give is the paradox from which all of human threeness and dialectics and everything emerges. That's my view of, of, of the world. Totally off topic, though, mm-hmm. because totally unsourced. But that's my view of the world. Uh, well, you know, actually, I was thinking of uh, certain aspects of what uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Hirsch was saying. Uh, oh, that's more relevant, uh, yeah. In a way, in which way, the, let's say, Israel being related to number eight is like... Uh, as, uh, in a kind of a new scale, it's like sort of imitato de. It is a uh, an echo of what God is doing. Um, and God creates, and we we try to create a bit in turn, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, in in in, in the, well, basically that that word that was said. Uh, it, it links to uh, what you mentioned about the uh, God is the ultimate giver. We. To, full, to be full, fully fulfilled, we need to be givers ourselves. Right. That's why I was saying the paradox of God giving us the ability to be givers. Yeah. Right. It's why the world has to be imperfect. Yeah, so that, because that, then we'd have nothing left to give if, if yeah. you know, if everything was there already. Okay. So just one final numer- numerological yeah. idea. So we have uh, two uh, two patterns that repeat themselves. One would be three plus one. Which would be like the Keter Shem Tov, 
And now you have seven plus one, which would be Israel. And look at that. that. Uh, in both cases, it's a matter of fulfillment beyond the basic. One case three, in another mm -hmm. case seven. I hear. That's it. To a certain extent, though, seven is six plus one. Because six is the days of creation, and seven gives sanctity to the six. Of course. Uh, right. Well, it's in thought structure. It's, uh, it's X plus one at any rate. Right. And a lot, lots of induction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so that, that's where I was going. That, that, you know, this is our farewell to threes. Um, so that's where I was trying to go with, with all the three stuff is that I think that there's a, it's a productive way of, of viewing the human condition in terms of, of our own Avodah Hashem. And I hope that the, the Maral and, and to some extent the Gra, um, you know, gave you where I was going with that. And the and Rav Hirsch's symbols give you some way to relate to it um, with daily activity as opposed to just, you know, I mean, like now it's just could be a mnemonic for, for, you know, Torah voted meals chasadim, to be a holistic Jew and not, you know, not, I have this fear because, because of the success of, I have nothing against Orisa and the success of, of Mishnabu Yomi. I just have this fear that people are going to think that Arachayim is all of Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, when, um, when we set up Arachashulchan Yomi, um, Rabbi Bechafer wanted to stick to just Arachayim because he didn't want it to take too long because then nobody would sign up. When I, I personally, when I was learning without trying to drift anybody else, I covered all four Turim. Mm -hmm. He said, you're not going to get people to sign up for a 10-year program. Um, you know, you're not Dafyomi. This is just not, you know, you know, you're not the Aguda. You know, no one's going to make that kind of commitment. So, say that, but okay. so we, so he cut it. It's, it's not too late to change our minds because we haven't reached the end of our Chaim by a long shot. Um, but, uh, but he cut it and he wanted, and I, I forced in the second half or the, or the last third of, um, of Yoridea, everything starting from blood spots and eggs, which is not, you know, what was important to me, but there's a lot of kashras in the kitchen, so it pays to, to include that. Um, so basically we skip shechting, we skip, uh, we skip, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Malicha? No, well, we skip Malicha too, but no, I'm thinking of um, um, Trefos, right? None of the anatomy, none of the, right? And we go right to Taroves, but it also includes, it also includes um, Bikor Cholim, it includes um, Ribis, it includes, I mean, th that was the idea. I mean, my idea. Was that the the program should have some Benam Lachavero in it, um, and it itself is Talmud Torah. So I figured we covered all three pillars that way. That was the that that was the that was the idea behind uh, behind what we picked for it to go beyond our Chaim. But um, but I think it's very important that we stay holistic. Um, let me introduce. We want to have much more time than just to introduce. Let me introduce where we're going next. It's very different than where we've been. So this is Olam Hayedidus. I scanned it from a book that is titled Ben Sheish Le Osor, from six to 10. Anybody know the reference? Um, uh, ben Kessel Le Osor? I uh, don't know. Ben Sheish Le Osor is a collection of essay, well, essays or maybe lecture notes, I don't know what, by Ravolbi, which originally the book was titled Olam Hayedidus. And um, 
Originally, it was titled Olam Hayididus. The whole book was. But in order to distinguish between the title essay and the book, they renamed the book. So what happened after the Six-Day War? So I have a friend whose bar mitzvah was that May. And he was he grew up in a conservative home. Um, in fact, he dropped out of JTF a little bit before Ismicha because because he walked into um, he walked into uh, Merkaz Harav and basically lost faith in conservative Judaism and decided not to finish his smicha. Um, he he you know he became an Orthodox Jew and very 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 rough cookie. But in any case, um, uh, there was he didn't get to fill in for the first three months after his bar mitzvah because his parents didn't know you know like had a shop for tefillin. They were just, you know, they weren't very literate Jews. So, you know, they went to the local Judaica shop and the local Judaica shop only got their tefillin from Israel. And there was such a run on tefillin in the days after the Six Day War that, um, that uh, what's it called? That they weren't exporting. <laughs> so he, he, like on his bar mitzvah, he was wearing borrowed tefillin because they couldn't get a hold of new tefillin for him. Um, and in that excitement, um, the professors from Tel Aviv University, from Kibbutzim that are not Dati, um, had approached Ravolbi and asked, what is it, you know, like, like they were interested in knowing what, what is it the Haredim belief, or maybe not even Haredim. I mean, I'm, I'm quoting the introduction, but um, when I was a kid, the word Haredim meant Orthodox. Um, in fact, the NCSY banner said that they were the youth arm in the Hebrew, they were the youth arm of the Igud Kihilot uh, HaKharediot. Yeah. Right? Also, yeah. The Union of Orthodox Synagogues of America defined Orthodox wrote yes. the Hebrew name instead of Orthodox it was Haredi. That's also so maybe he just meant the journal. So so maybe he just meant that they were approaching, you know, they want to know all Orthodoxy, but he himself was Haredi. So either way it works. So he gave a series of lectures aimed to non-Orthodox people to teach them the fundamentals of Judaism. And the first essay in that collection, right, was given uh, from a select number of intellectuals in Tel Aviv and people from Kibbutz Hulda, which I do not think was named after the prophetess, the prophet, the Navi, Neviyah Hulda. I believe it was named after the fact that when they started building the kibbutz, a weasel came out of the ground, and so they named the kibbutz Hulda. Um, these are not very spiritually, whatever, focused people. Um, although, again, my friend, the Rav Cook follower, would firmly disagree because just the fact that they're in Israel being idealists proves that they're spiritual. But um, but that's the uh, that's who he was speaking to. And Olam Haididut is is I guess I would translate it. In fact, I did translate it for uh, Gil's um, for Torah musings, um, the world of affection. So there's two versions of Olam Hayididus. This is the title essay of the book. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. This was the title essay of the book. There's another version where he takes the, the first part and then goes in a different direction afterwards, which is after here in HTML, not in scan. Um, so when you get past the scan, it's... When you get past the scan, there it is. Um, so I found actually an, an electronic version of this essay, um, which he wrote for a Laniato hospital. Um, don't know what that Saudi is. It's probably a typo because Saudi is a period in, um, in ASCII. When you're using the keyboard in English, yeah. that yeah. capital Saudi is the period. So it's probably just a typo. But in any case, um, so for a journal in 
in uh, for Laniato Hospital. He did an essay on psychiatry and religion. Much later, in Tufshim and Bays. Yes, much later. I was actually alive for this one. Uh, actually, I was alive for sixty-seven also, but I was I was you know two. Um, Unconscious. Yeah. At two, I was conscious, but yeah, whatever. But, 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 but in any case, in this version, he, um, he, con- he, so this is one section of that essay where he defines the Jewish view of what a human is. So section A is an intro, section B is the psychological model that he gets from Torah, and then section C was the contrast. That's, that's the, the title of the essay. Mm-hmm. Section B is actually very deep, very fundamentally based, heavily quotes um, the, the first part of Olam Haididos and then goes in a different direction. So I thought we would, we would jump in. Uh, we'd skip the overlap, obviously, and we jump in and look at, at Olam Haididos and then this add-on. Um, would be next. Olam Haigididos is not about Bein Adam Lechavero exclusively. <coughs> so when he talks about, about the centrality of Yididos, he's also talking about our relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu should be one of Yididos as well, as is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's relationship with us, although there you don't need the should, it is um, one of Yididos as well. So he's defining the the entire um, Jewish mission, the three crowns and the three pillars and everything else, because he's not talking about threes here. Um, He sees in, but, you know, three forms of Tov to Ravolbi would be three forms of Yedidos. So that's a key element in the picture I'm trying to build, even though we have nothing to do with threes anymore. Um, so that's that's where we're going. I think there's a book here somewhere. Oh yeah, maybe next time when I re- next time I retire, I'll I'll put together. Next time a book. you retire. Yes. We have the recorded already, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. Much easier. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna call it quits here now that I introduced the text because it's it's a little absurd to begin the text with five minutes left especially since um, I have a meeting for work to get ready for. So I'm stopping the share and I'm, anybody want to ask something on record? Um, very briefly, um, what were the others um, represented by, with one, which ones? Avram is like Right, oh. so Avram, Avram is Chesed. So okay. he, he was Avoda. Okay. Yit, um, Yitzchak was uh, sorry, he was Chesed. He was um, he was Kuna. Okay. Um, not Kuna. He was Gmil Chasadim. Yeah. I'm, I'm, he, they, he said it was the pillars. I'm going to the crowns. He said it was Gmil Chasadim. Yitzchak was Avoda, which is why he was near Karal Gaba Right. Right. And Yaakov, who is Yisrael and Yishoron, which notice is. The Torah has two roles to play in this little system again, but Yaakov is each Tami Yosheva Alim. He is Torah. Yes, I don't remember also, if- al- also he said that that um, Yitzchak is Avoda and Rivka was Chesed, and that was how they produced Yaakov. Right. So. Right, because Rivka runs to give the water, and she she acts like her father-in-law. So I don't want to keep from reading. I was just thinking that that also parallels what they say in other places that that Avram gets Hakinyaka represent Chesed Gura and Teferis respectively. If Teferis is Torah, yeah, yes, which which right. right, right, So right, it could be, or it could be, um, Das. It, it could be. It could be. But this it could be no, right. no, it could be the source of the of the of the right. It, I, I'm just going back to that first uh, that first discussion you and I had. Right? Is is Torah the source of the culmination or both? Right. So it could be both explanations work, and I'm I'm actually arguing that the Maral is ambiguously placing it in both roles. 
I, I'm just giving you another three. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with threes. Okay. Okay, so thank you all. Have a wonderful evening, people. Thank you for uh, giving me giving my throat a break, John. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Okay, guys. See you soon. Okay, bye.